Terpenes are added into all kinds of vape carts, but a new study is showing that some of these terpenes can actually be very dangerous and have even turned some lab rats into straight up mush. This stuff is already illegal in Canada, but it's still completely legal in the US, so it could be in your carts right now. Oh shit. <coughs> What's up and welcome back to The Strange Show. If this is your first time here, my name is Matt and I am a cannabis industry employee, a medical marijuana patient. I love to learn everything I can about weed and that's exactly what we do on this channel. So if you wanna learn some new fun facts about weed every week, don't forget to subscribe so you can put some nuggets of knowledge into your strain brain. In this video, we're gonna look at the crazy story of one man versus the government that revealed that a terpene being used in vape carts called Phytol is actually very dangerous. We are gonna look at what Phytol is, why it might be in your carts. We're gonna look at how dangerous this could be, why it's still legal to use in the US, and I'll show you how to make sure you don't end up with any of this stuff in your carts. So this isn't the first time that we're hearing about tainted or dangerous vape carts. Way back in 2019, I did a video about the vape carts that were tainted with vitamin E acetate that were causing all kinds of problems. The bad carts in 2019 were tainted with vitamin E acetate, which a lot of people thought was safe to use in their carts. But in the span of about six months, those tainted vapes injured almost 3,000 people and even killed 68 people. Yeah, you heard that right. 68 people died from black market THC vapes. And that was mainly because nobody was talking about it until it was too late. So let's talk about this new stuff right now. So back in 2019, people eventually stopped using that vitamin E acetate in their vape carts and that problem eventually went away. But new kinds of carts are hitting the market every day and sometimes people are using stuff in these carts that they've never even tested to make sure they're actually safe to vape. And this isn't just happening in the black market, this is actually happening in the legal market too. So you might get additives in your vape that you would totally expect to be safe that could potentially be really fucking dangerous. No one even knows if this stuff is safe for you to vape but they're just throwing it in there anyways. Dr. Robert Strongen is the professor of chemistry at Portland State University, and he has spoken out about these new vape additives saying, the science is so far behind, we're all guinea pigs now. And the latest additive that we are all guinea pigging is something called Phytol. Phytol is what's known as a diterpene alcohol that comes from chlorophyll that is naturally found in tiny trace amounts in cannabis plants. In its natural state, this plant oil smells like grass, and it's probably not something you would want to taste. But synthetic phytol is odorless and almost tasteless, and this synthetic phytol is commonly used as a chemical additive in products like detergents, shampoos, household cleaners, and even weed vapes. This stuff is being used in vape carts mainly to dilute pure cannabis oil. And it's being used in the legal market and in the black market too. So if someone is making carts themselves, they can easily increase their profit by cutting their cannabis oil with something like this synthetic Phytol. With a quick web search, you can find endless cheap supplies of Phytol. And in illegal markets where there is no testing for THC potency, people will use stuff like this to cut their oil and make more profit. So the person making the carts will take some cannabis oil and then mix it with something like this Phytol, and then they will package it into some nice fancy box with little stickers on it that makes it look like it's potent and pure and legit and tested, but they actually just made it in their garage and bought all these boxes and stickers off the internet. And there's tons of fake packaging online for carts. You can get fake barcodes and fake stickers that make it look like it even came out of a dispensary from another state. So if you're buying carts on the black market, you really have no idea if you're getting something else in there like this synthetic phytol. And you would think this stuff would be safe to use in the black market if they're using it in the legal market in the US and in Canada. But a new study on this stuff has shown some wild results. This is crazy shit and one article said that the data contained in this report has rocked the cannabis vaping world. A little over a month ago on June 23rd, the agency that oversees cannabis in Canada called Health Canada Canada was forced to release a private document after a request was filed under the Access to Information Act. 
which is basically the Canadian version of the United States Freedom of Information Act. The AIA request for this information was filed by David Heldreth, the former chief science officer for True Terpenes, a major fight all reseller. David requested this info after he noticed that a chain of Canadian cannabis stores owned by the huge company Canopy Growth suddenly stopped selling all vape carts that contained Phytol. So this guy is the chief science officer for a company that sells mad Phytol and he just notices that all of a sudden the biggest company in Canada pulled all the Phytol products off the shelf and he's like, hold up, what the fuck? That's what I sell. What do you guys know that I don't know? He wanted to know what research they must have done that they hadn't released to the public, and so that's why he filed his IAI request. David waited on Health Canada for five months for the information from his IAI request, worrying that the fight all that his company was selling could be dangerous. And when the government finally did release the information, it was way worse than he thought it was gonna be. The information he received was the full report of a 2020 safety study of the vape cartridge additive Phytol that was based on research done by Canopy Growth, one of Canada's largest cannabis companies. This was the first study comparing the toxicity of inhaled Phytol versus the commonly used propylene glycol, and the experiments went so bad that they were forced to cancel a 14-day study after only two days. The plan was to take three groups of rats, expose one group to a mix of propylene glycol and air, expose the second group to a mix of Phytol and air, and the third group would be exposed to only air as a control. The researchers planned to do this for 14 days exposing the rats for different lengths of time. But after only two days of exposure, all of the Phytol rats were either dead or gasping and unresponsive. The researchers had to euthanize the remaining Phytol rats and the directors put a stop to the entire Phytol arm of the trial. Some of the conclusions from the Phytol rat said that there was acute toxicity in all dose groups. Phytol caused severely purple lungs that were hemorrhaging. And it said that the rat's nose, throat, and lung tissue had melted away in a process called necrosis. What the fuck? The rat's face melted away? What? His fucking face melted off from vape juice? That's not right. That's, that shouldn't, I'm no damn scientist, but I'm pretty sure that shouldn't happen. And I know these are rats. They're not actually people, but this is how they test that kind of thing. Like this is how we do test on what might kill people. We try it on like rats and shit first. And all of the rats that were in that same study that were exposed to the same amounts of propylene glycol, they lasted the whole 14 days and they didn't have any lasting effects after the test. On the other hand, all the other rats from the fight all either died or they had to be put to sleep or their face melted the fuck off and their lungs were bleeding. What? And as you might suspect, this is enough to have some experts very worried. Kyle Boyer, the vice chair of cannabis chemistry for the American Chemical Society said, it's pretty bad. It's something we should be sounding the alarm on. The results were so bad that in 2020, Canopy Growth immediately stopped selling all third-party vape cartridges containing Phytol, and a spokesperson for the company said, For the safety of consumers, we do not believe Phytol should be used in any vape products. The findings of the study were clear that concentrated Phytol resulted in adverse effects to the study animals. Yeah, no shit, adverse effects? You can say that again. Now, Canada hasn't like actually officially banned this product, but every product that's sold in Canada first has to be approved by a review board. It's called the Provincial Review Board. And now that they have the results from this study, they will no longer approve anything that has fight all in it. David Heldreth says it's shadow banned. But even though this is shadow banned in Canada, it's still completely legal to use this in every state that has legal cannabis laws for stuff like this. Like this fight all is not banned whatsoever here. And we don't even have like a federal board that has to inspect all of our products. So even if it was banned, no one would even know if you're using it anyways. But why, why is this still legal here? Probably because most cannabis regulators in America aren't even aware of fight all, much less 
discuss the dangers of Phytol, and hardly no states are testing specifically for Phytol in their carts. Some places like California and Oregon have laws that require all ingredients, including Phytol, to be listed on the container, but the laws don't require them to specifically test for Phytol. But that's only part of the problem. Another big part of the problem is the people that are actually selling this stuff are still claiming that it's safe to use and marketing it as being safe to use in vape carts. And they don't seem to care that all of the health experts and all of the vaping experts seem to completely disagree with them. Arnaud Dumas de Raleigh, the chairman of the International Organization for Standardization Committee on Vapor Products, was very clear about how he felt when he said, I strongly believe that Phytol should be banned and tested for. I'm totally opposed to using Phytol. But remember our buddy David who first filed the IAI request for this information? At the time, he was the chief science officer for True Terpenes, a major Phytol reseller. He has now left that company, but True Terpenes is still trying to push this Phytol like it's safe. Shauna Vreek, the lead safety chemist at True Terpenes, said the rats in the experiments were inhaling orders of magnitude more Phytol than humans receive via a vape cartridge. Vreek said it would be like hitting a vape 250 times in 30 minutes. But like we said before, this is how we do test. What does she expect? That they're just going to give the rats some vapes and be like, just use these however you like and holler at me in 30 years and let me know if there's any long-term damage. No, the rats, you know, they give the, the test subjects more. You, this is how the test works. This is normal. Dr. Strongen said that the Phytol dosing in the canopy study looked quite high to compare to people vaping, but was fairly typical for this type of study. But this lady says that this stuff is safe and it's chill and that you should even buy it from her company. And she even references three older studies to try to prove that this stuff is safe. The only problem is all of these studies are over 20 years old and none of them do anything to prove that this is safe. It's like, why did you even share these? The canopy study did describe the harm done to the rat's lungs as dose dependent, meaning that the less they gave them, the less their lungs would bleed. But I don't know about you, but for me, I don't want my lungs to bleed at all. Not even a little bit, not even once, not even never. There's so much other stuff to put in vapes that doesn't do this, why put this in there? But this stuff is still legal to use. The people selling it claim that it's safe. It can help people make more money. And so it seems like that this stuff could be anywhere. So how the hell are we supposed to avoid this? For this, we're gonna talk about the black market and we're gonna talk about the legal market. So let's talk about the legal market first. So one thing to remember about the legal market is that one of the greatest selling points in the dispensary is like the potency. And since in a legal market, everything has to be tested for the potency and then you have to put that test result on the product and you're not allowed to lie, the customer knows exactly how potent the product is and they want to buy the most potent stuff you have most of the time so in a legal market where you can't really lie it wouldn't really make sense to try to dilute your pure oil with something like this phytol because nobody wants like a 60 percent or 70 percent cart they want 80s 90s so that might make it less common to see this stuff in the legal market but it's not impossible this stuff was being sold in canada's legal market before it got shadow banned and it could be floating around in a shop near you. And here are some ways you can spot it. First off, you can simply ask the bud tender if they have any safety data or lab testing that they can share with you, or if they know if the carts have any additives in them. If a company is advertising as additive free, that is a good sign, but you need purity tests to actually prove that is true. Watch out for vague references to natural ingredients or even added terpenes. If it seems like they are being intentionally vague with any of the wording on this product, that could be a red flag. And even though it is rare that you will find some of this stuff in the legal market, it is out there. Or at least it definitely seems like it's out there. In 2020, Oregon regulators actually flagged Phytol as a known vape cartridge additive with unknown health risk, and the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission said OLCC is keeping a very close eye on Phytol. So it seems like they've at least come across this in Oregon. So what about the black market? In the black market, anything goes. There is no testing, no regulations, no risk of losing a license. It's just all about 
making as much money as you can any way you can. And black market carts are very, very often cut with something else to increase the profit, and there's no telling what this oil you get on the street could be contaminated with. Synthetic cannabinoids, fake terps, cutting agents, and maybe even some of this phytol. So first off, if you know someone that is making black market carts, at least tell them not to use phytol. If you insist on cutting your oil and ripping people off, at least do your research and use something that's safe to vape. And second off, if you are the one getting these black market carts, don't trust that the people you're getting them from are telling the truth or have done anything safe. Because even if you trust this person and they're telling you the truth, maybe they got it from a person they trusted but that person lied to them. So they think it's real and they tell you it's real because they think that, but it's actually fake. And it could have anything in it. Your nose might melt off like a little rat. So as far as the black market goes, don't trust anything. And I would say that pretty much any day of the year as far as black market carts go, because they are notoriously sketchy. But especially right now, while we know this is dangerous, yet still going around, we don't want a repeat of 2019 people getting hurt from sketchy vape carts. And I know a lot of people depend on the black market for your meds, and if that's the case, at least just stay away from carts right now. You can just hit up the flower. There's always flower and other stuff besides carts. It's like the most easily cut thing. It's like one of the only things that you can cut. You can't take a bag of weed and mix it with half dirt and be like, yeah, that's pure weed. You're like, no, uh, half of this is dirt. I can clearly see that's fucking dirt. But with a cart, you don't know what's in there. It could be anything. It could be some of this zombie turf, melt your nose off. In a lot of cases, synthetic phytol can be colorless and tasteless, but some giveaways could be that it has sort of like a grassy taste. Or if you know if it tastes like chlorophyll or chemicals, any of those things, don't smoke that. If it burns your throat, don't smoke that. If it tastes crazy, if you think something's off, something's probably off. And there's all kinds of new carts popping up all the time, like these new THCO carts that are popping up everywhere. So just be careful what you get. Don't trust the black market. If you want to learn more about THCO and how it could be 300% stronger, watch this video or watch this video that YouTube swears you're going to love. And don't forget to subscribe for good vibes and those nuggets of knowledge. Because when you watch The Strange Show, it's like going to weed college.